everybody, it's Smalls with <clears throat> the long-awaited Chapter 93 manga review of Attack on Titan. Of course, before I get started with that, let me remind you, I made the new Patreon. So if you haven't checked it out now, check it out, if you feel inclined at least. But let's get back into the chapter review. We are still at Marley. I know it was uh, rumored and previously confirmed that it was going to be like a two-part you know, stay where we stayed, you know, on the side of Marley, but it seems that it's been extended a bit, and you know, it's fine, because you know what this chapter did? It gave us even more of a view. Because sure, we could have just ended off with the, you know, the realization that the Age of Titans is over, but no, instead, we go straight to the Marleyan government, and they're, con they're at some kind of table, you know, having discussion with Zeke about their win, but at the same time, the loss they gained within the win. The cost of winning, uh, or as so to speak. And even in that talk, there is actually a tongue-in-cheek joke that could either be a throwaway joke, which I highly doubt, but it could also be a reference to the ninth potential Titan Shifter. Which is a... It was at least mentioned or teased. Or just a joke. It was in context. Talking about how... Currently, the naval battle... That they can't really bring the Titans into... Is one of their main weak points. Because they focus so much on the Titans. They have not been able to catch up... With how much the military has expanded. And I'm going to be honest... That struck hard. Because, yes, they literally can't do much in the sea. They can do limited amounts. But when it comes to the defensive stuff, if even the armored titan can get blown to bits... But Rainer's fine. Just drop that in there. If even he can get blown to bits, it's pretty bad for any titan who isn't him. Luckily, Rainer's just as resilient as he is armored... I mean, he did previously have his head blown off, which is literally one of the few things that was supposed to be able to kill Titan Shifters, and he survived. So he's not just armored, he's resilient. Good for you, Raynor. Pound town for life! Sorry, I had to say that. But, uh, no, this is the... Before we get into the Raynor part of the chapter, let's just discuss the Zeke part. Sadly, a lot of earlier translations, which I was very skeptical, otherwise I would have had this video out a few days ago, were very offbeat. Like, some of them made it seem like Zeke was passing his power to his son or whatnot, but there's no son. He's passing it on to Colt. That's why you always gotta look at your translations. Translation errors can completely make or break a story. And yes, in the proper translations, it is revealed that he will be passing the Beast Titan to Colt. He has a year left, so Zeke is ready to throw down. It also gives us a rough estimation of when Zeke got his powers, but either way, it doesn't matter. He only has a year left. And that's going to be pretty serious, because he has to hand it down to Colt soon. And speaking of the Beast Titan powers, we get one little piece of information that we've actually been thinking of and theorizing off of for a couple years now in the manga. Remember when Connie's village was turned into Titans? Well, apparently we learned the exact method and how he did it because he did the exact same thing in the parabombing last chapter in which he takes little pieces of his spinal fluid injects it into Eldians, and when he yells, they transform and do his exact bidding. Even though it's not as powerful as the Coordinate Titan, it is similar in nature because he has the royal blood. And I say because that, because of the dialogue. On top of that, based off of dialogue, I think they don't know that he is royalty. I, I'm pretty sure the Marlin government has no idea about his royal blood. And neither does Colt, but he will. He most certainly will. And here's the thing. They managed to hide it by switching to a joke about uh, 
Titan about Eldian asses and wiping Eldian asses, which is I'm a I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> you know that this is some fucked up jokes, man. But you know it's good to see a sense of humor in light of the very serious matters that are discussed in this chapter. From Marley losing their hold based on the fact that they just haven't been keeping up in regular warfare and they've been focusing so much on the Titans. Once the battles go to the sky, they're screwed. I, I'm even sure that when they were referencing bombs, they might have been going a little bit further and referencing the possible atom bombs that could possibly come around the horizon at some point. Not that we'll have to worry about that. Because in the end, what Zeke wants to do is focus on making Marley feel so powerful to the other countries that they don't try to do that until they have caught up. And the best way to do that is to take over Paradise and put it in headlines. Yes, once again, the press is taking center stage in Attack on Titan. I actually kind of like, ever since we had that political arc that led with Historia becoming queen, I feel like not only the world building, but the sense that it's not just a fist fight or a sword on Titan neck fight. It is a political matter. It's a whole new world. It's a huge fucking world. And many people... Some people say an attack on Titan's average at best. I say, the fuck you talking about? Like, there are very few series that put together such a world, such depth. Like, I could, I could think of a couple at best. I mean, even Naruto's world was kind of deep to some extent. Kind of overshadowed. But this one delves into it. The only other series I can think of that delves into their world building as much albeit falling short in the end, I actually mentioned it back in October, Claymore. That's another big series, which had a lot of parallels. I'm not going to go over those again, but I'll leave a link to the video where I did actually parallel the two series up in the cards. Nonetheless, I have to say, brilliant. Absolutely fucking brilliant, because it wasn't just Zeke. Once we switch from Zeke and his passing the torch to Colt in the future, we learn that Raynor hasn't exactly chosen who he wants to, you know, take his powers. And even though Gabby looks like a major contender for the race for Raynor's armored titan abilities, it seems that he's going for Falco instead, Colt's little brother, mainly because... He, he, he really flashed back to all the parallels to his past group of friends, which included Annie, Bertolt, Marcel, and Marcel's older brother, Gilliard, who I'm going to get into in a second. But, uh, it seems that Rainer's conflict is a little bit deeper than we thought, because Bertolt put out that, yes, Rainer was more of a warrior in the past, but this chapter goes into why he's changed and the depths of why he's changed. And you want to know what it was? If you, well, you've read the chapter by now, but it was Marcel. Which is good, because I didn't like the fact that Marcel, who was a confirmed Titan Shifter, was just basically thrown under the bus when it came to forwarding his powers to Ymir. But this chapter pulls closure on Marcel's non-existent story arc as well as Ymir's, believe it or not. And in in the end we learn that, yes, Gilliard is actually not only the older brother of Marcel, but he wasn't chosen to go into Paradis with the rest of them, and the power of the Jaw Titan, which he currently has, was initially given to Marcel. So, with that confirmed, if anyone wants to make any guesses to what the, uh, what that means for Ymir. That means that the fan-made name, the Dancing Titan, is done. GG, it's over. She was the Jaw Titan. I'm not entirely sure why she couldn't pull out the full extent of the powers or look anything close to Gilliard's. Maybe that'll be addressed. I don't have the answers. I'm not going to bother going into that. I hate going into theory territory sometimes. But not all the time. I love theories, but only when they are 
worthwhile, and there is a lot of evidence to back them up. Otherwise, it just sounds like bullshit coming out of my mouth. Either way, I will at the very least admit that, you know, people are still going to try to hold on to the dancing titan thing. So if you guys see someone using the term dancing titan, correct them. It was a fan-made name. It's never an official name. Some people have actually been so engrossed in that fan-made name that they think that it's an actual titan power, and then that they think that Gilliard, who has the jaw titan power, has jaw titan and dancing? Which is not true. They think it's similar to Aaron, who has the founding and the attack titan abilities. Which, of course, isn't true. But nonetheless, we also got a little deeper, you know, guys into how memory passing works. It's not all at once. Then again, considering the whole line of succession, how many memories are in that passage, you might never get to see the full extent of their memories. If anything, sometimes there might need to be a catalyst. For example, uh, it wasn't until after he got to the basement that he was really able to go into his father's memories. Aaron was not able to go into Grisha's memories full on, straight off the bat. And remember, he has had Grisha's abilities, his memories, stored within him from the beginning. Not the beginning of the series, but since the first time skip when Grisha actually, you know, passed the abilities on. But coupled with the amnesia, the shock, and the inexperience with the abilities, he couldn't see the full extent of his father's memories. So that's one thing. Well, either way, now, you know, getting into something else that actually was mentioned during that entire talk between Raynor and Gilliard is the fact that the other new Titan Shifter, Piek, is uh, actually a girl. So, yeah. Actually, another thing I noticed in the community is that a lot of the wikis, none of the information around... I know most of the chapters, stuff that had been released, like Friday, Saturday was just early shitty translations. But even from those shitty translations, there were some things you could pick up on. Like Peek being a girl. Nothing has really actually, you know, reflected this new information. Nor that Ymir is dead, or that Ymir is not a quote-unquote dancing titan. So, once again, spread the right information around, guys. And spread it properly. Seriously. But aside from that revelation... Oh, wait, that and she was actually in her Titan ability form for like two months. So she has to use crutches. That's a neat little addition. Going back to Rainer's mindset, though, because there's not too much left in the chapter. Rainer's mindset is not... It's not the same as what we would think of a villain. Because remember, these are just as innocent children being thrown into war. Rainer's grown up a bit. He's seen both sides of the story. So right now, his main objective is no longer really helping the Marlene government win. Of course, he's still on their side. He wants them to win. But that's more, that's more of a side quest for him. Because his main goal at the moment is to make sure these kids who are going to inherit Zeke's power, his power, and continue the fight, and perhaps even be the final opponents for our main protagonist on Paradis, he wants to make sure they survive. So in that little context, I think Raynor might be one of the solving pu puzzles, pieces to the puzzle that is the end of Attack on Titan, because it's going to be a smaller situation. It's not going to be that big. Like I said, I've paralleled this to Claymore, and just like Claymore, I feel like whatever final battle isn't going to be between Paradis, Marley, and the rest of the world, hell, it probably won't even be against Marley itself. If anything, Marley will get what's coming to it once they have lost all of their Titan abilities in the fight with Paradis. Paradis won't have to lift a finger past that. If anything, I could even see the final battle where all of the Titan Shifters just die. Nobody survives. Of course, with the succession of power, 
that might be a little difficult. So, but either way, I could totally see a quote-unquote bad ending. Actually, I did just remember two other things I want to discuss. If you're still here, you're lucky because this is something that was in all of the translations. I was a little skeptical when I read it first in Yonko Productions, but when I read it in Manga Stream's translation, I knew it was real. The Ackerman family, which has been constantly mentioned over and over again, and with their main members, Levi and Mikasa, we get the reveal that they are actually the byproducts of Titan Research. This actually opens up another question that we should have asked a while back. They're obviously modeled after the Asian culture. So, they're a different race, is what I'm saying. So when you think of Titan Shifters in general, what are the things that we now know they all have to be? They have to be of Eldian descent. Of course, with them being byproducts of Titan Research, that does open up some doors, but honestly, the chances of Mikasa or Levi ever becoming Titan Shifters has basically just been nearly nullified unless their byproductness opens that door back up. They are their own race. They are their own people. And they are fucking monsters to the point where they've actually scared Zeke shitless. I actually should have mentioned this earlier on for the people who have tuned out by now, but Zeke was basically shitting his pants. Like, he was fucking terrified of Levi, and apparently that also applies to Mikasa. So he is not having it. I'm not sure if anyone else who really got to see them much are feeling the same, but I could at least imagine Rainer being a little bit scared of Mikasa. Because remember... When they were originally, you know, found, when they initially re when they initially revealed themselves to Aaron, Mikasa cut Rainer and Bertold the fuck up. There was a lot of bloodshed. Like they literally shouldn't have survived. Then again, that's just the first of many times Rainer has literally escaped near death by literal sheer will. Pound Town, am I right? Another thing I wanted to get into, as much as I don't want to drop the Ackerman thing, there's only so much I can get into. So I want you guys to put your theories down below. Alright? I want you guys to be very active in the comments this time. Especially the people who have made it this far. This is probably one of the longest videos I've ever made for Attack on Titan. And I should! I should be making videos this long for Titan. Because there is so much in every little bit of it. I mentioned this earlier with the Wing of Titan. Regardless of whether it has wings or not, the fact is, there is another Titan Shifter out there. Whose side are they on? Unless that political member of Marley was just, and instead of it being more of a joke or a tease towards something in the future, maybe he was teasing that they already do have one. I don't, I don't think that's the case. But, you have to imagine that if it's not the case, who is it? Is it someone we know? Is it someone new? And whose side are they on? Whose side will they be on? Or will they be like Ymir? In the sense of, they were literally a wild card. Like, Ymir in the end is gone. GG, she's no longer around. You can't count on Ymir for anything right now. Because think about it. She was a good person. But she was also pretty selfish. And her main interest was keeping Krista safe. Historia safe. And in the end, that meant giving the Titan power of the Jaws back to Marley. So in the end, which actually was a smart move on her part on one end, you know, prolonging the battle, but they have that power back. They do. And it's sad. Even Gilliard has to admit that that girl was just a sad, poor child who was given a name too big for her. So you have to imagine how much of a wild card Ymir was and think if there is a when the ninth finally shows themselves, male, female, Marlian, Eldian, Ackerman, something, they will be a wild card. Probably, possibly, very likely. Because in the end, we don't know 
who they are, what they want, and if they have wings or not. That would be fucking awesome, but it probably wouldn't do much. So, there's that. And there was also a tease of Armin's colossal form, but it was nothing more than a tease. Because this was just speculation off the Marlian government side. And speaking of speculation, I just remembered that neither side knows everything. Sure, Paradis actually probably has a much bigger idea of what's going on in Marley than Marley does of Paradis, aside from the fact that Rainer just got his ass whooped. But the Marlian government doesn't know the exact state of their Titan shifters. They don't know if they've done anything with any from that point on. Honestly, I would have thought that Rainer would have just, you know, imagined they'd be keeping her up. But then again, Rainer never actually found out the specifics of Andy's capturing. And the only time she was mentioned to Rainer and Berthold before Berthold's untimely death was when Armin lied to Berthold and proved that they really didn't know anything and goaded him on. So when it comes down to it, Rainer's information is incomplete. They don't know what Paradis has. They say that they have four powers, but in reality, they just have three powers stuck in two Titan Shifters. And Annie is probably still in her diamond cocoon. Will they ever break it? Who knows? But you know what? I think that from them mentioning her in this chapter alone, we might just possibly have a chance of at least finding out her final fate at some point, kind of like we found out Ymir's final fate in the end. So what do you guys think about Annie's final fate? Do you think they'll release it any time in the next year? And do you guys find it ironic that the same day, because when the original translations came out, when we found out Ymir died, how ironic is it that a Ymir-centric anime episode would be, you know, released the same day, and all the anime onlys would be asking, holy shit, is Ymir dead? Like, you know how many Ymir is dead videos I found on YouTube? They really think she's dead. I mean, not anymore, because most of us have commented on said videos saying otherwise. I know I did. So, what do you guys think about all of that? How, how funny is that? How ironic is that? And do you guys want longer videos like this? Of course, if they're longer like this, they're obviously going to be a hell lot more structured. And speaking of structured, the next video that I'm so glad I kept putting off is the Who are the Titan Shifters? Because remember, that's the two-part discussion that I'm going to be doing, and yet I haven't got the chance to go through with it yet. But now, thanks to procrastinating, constantly, I have all the information that we need. For example, if I had made that a week ago, if I had made it last Sunday like I wanted to, I would have improperly stated that Ymir as the dancing titan, fan made name, was one of the nine. In reality, Ymir was just the jaw titan. So there are only eight. I will also go back into the mystery of the other titan. But in the end, I finally have enough information to put together a concise video on who all the shifters are. And I will be going over each of their powers in that thing. Not completely in-depth, because some of them don't really have that much depth, but I will be going over what each Titan shifter has, and their relations to one another as well. So this is the end of that. Thank you guys for joining me. I am Smalls of Black 994. Don't forget to check out everything else I have to show you guys. And the Patreon again. Check that out if you feel inclined. I feel like the YouTube boycott is finally going down a bit. But don't forget, check that out. Give the video a like. Comment all the way. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and subscribe! Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Join the notification squad. You'll know when part two of the Titan discussion is dropped. Till then, later.